walked into the LACMA museum and immediately my eyes caught the painting called Child Portrait, Peter in Sicily, painted by famous German artist Georg Schrimpf in 1925. The first question that came to my mind was why this artist portrayed the child with an adult facial expression. I'd felt surreal and unexplainable fear. However, the selection of complementary colors using this painting took me back to reality and comforted me. After looking at it for a while, I started to feel connection with the artist's emotions. It looked like he wanted to make a connection between us through the depiction of this child, as if he was trying to start a conversation. He was trying to explain a terrible situation and was asking for help. There was something deep and mysterious in the child's eyes. Feelings of sadness and fright were conveyed from his gaze. His body language and standing position resembled someone with an abusive childhood. Oval shapes and lines in the figure made me feel that Peter was an innocent child who did not do anything wrong. He was a good boy, but someone treated him poorly for something that he didn't do. He was communicating with his look instead of words. His mouth was shut, but his eyes were so expressive. His closed mouth was a sign of a kid who was not allowed to speak. In the painting, his body was slightly turned towards me, but he was holding onto the fence with his left hand. I felt as if Peter was asking for help, but I also thought that he didn't entirely trust me to walk out from the canvas and come to me. The background of the painting, however, expressed totally different emotions. Behind the fence, the landscape consisted of a blue sky, gray mountains, and green trees near a village. The white houses and the green orchards gave a hope for better times which were so close but not reachable yet. The mountains behind the village exaggerated the long wait it would take to reach happiness. The painting describes the duality of Peter's situation, the conflict created by the stark difference of landscapes on two sides of the fence augments the expression on Peter's face. Another element of the painting that captured my attention were the shadows depicted on the outside wall. Schrimpf used this element in his painting to show that Peter is stuck in a prison of sorts. The shadows keep the darkness inside the building where innocent Peter stands. Meanwhile, outside there is plenty of sunlight where there are no signs of human life. Humans are the ones who create this horrible situation for other humans. Where there are no humans, nature is sunlight. World War I is a monstrous creation of human darkness. However, many questions were haunting me when I was looking at Georg Stream painting. Questions like why did this German painter title his painting Peter in Sicily? Why did he choose a city name from Italy and not Germany? Why did he choose to portray a child when he could express the same concepts in this painting using an image of an adult person? Or overall, what did he want to express by painting this surreal environment? Georg Schrimm was not the only 20th century German artist who grabbed my attention with his painting on that day at the museum. There was another German artist from the same time period who interested me with his fabulous artwork called The Orator. His name was Magnus Zeller. In contrast to Schrimm's painting, which talked to my emotions and teared up my eyes, Magnus Zeller's painting gave me a sense of strength and confidence. In The Orator, I saw a crowd of people who felt convinced and gathered around a powerful speaker and orator. The speaker seemed to be someone people could trust. In the Peter in Sicily painting, the kid looked alone and helpless, seeking someone who could help him and who would hear his voice. That someone was me, the audience. Peter didn't look like someone who could trust any person easily. 
It would be strange for him to trust me quickly and get help from me, but it looked like I was his last hope. In contrast, the crowd in Zeller's painting didn't pay any attention to what was happening outside of the room where the event was happening. Instead, they looked like mindless zombies manipulated by the orator's speech. I didn't feel sympathy at all, but I was curious about what was the orator telling these people that captured everyone's attention. Everyone's focus was on the orator alone. I would be interested in listening to his speech and finding out what was he talking about. The next thing that grabbed my attention was the contrast of lines and shapes in both artworks. Magnus Zeller used diagonal lines and bodies in broken forms. For example, the angle and the shape that the artist used to paint the orator's mouth matches the slope of the brush strokes on the background wall. It gave me a feeling that the speaker's voice was echoing in the room and was more audible by the crowd. In Peter in Sicily, the artist used only horizontal and soft line to give his audience a feeling of sympathy and pity. Peter's mouth was closed, reminding me of a child without speech ability. But in Zeller's painting, the orator's mouth was open and looked like he was shouting which told me that speaker had no fear of speaking. In the orator, the people in the crowd are depicted with rough shapes of their hands, faces and eyes. The artists often use jagged square and triangle shapes to portray facial features. This gave the crowd a churlish and tough look, but at the same time made them look helpless, whose last hope in the orator. Zeller masterfully used techniques to show a crowd that is not alone and must have hope because they have an orator who can deliver them from suffrage and can lead them to a better life. I started thinking about the impact of the colors used by these two artists. For instance, the orator wears a green suit, a metaphor for hope. Georg Schrimm used the same color for the forest in Peter in Sicily to express the same feeling of hope for the future. Another example is the value of the colors. Zeller used dark colors around the edges and lighter ones near the orator. The light was the brightness in the center where the orator stands, making him the center of attention. I felt that the painter wanted to show that if people listen to the orator, they could achieve what they were hoping for. Both artists painting their paintings right after World War I, and they showed the impact of political events on people's lives. Understandably, they added their personal experiences to their artworks. Georg Schrimpf was self-taught and drew obsessively from his early childhood. He was born in Germany and lost his father before he was born. At the age of 12, his stepfather forced him to leave the house to find a job. Georg moved to Sicily and started working there while he was still a young boy. I was sure that this is why he decided to show a landscape in Sicily in in his artwork. Also, he chose a depict an innocent little boy with an adult facial expression instead of showing a grown man in his picture. Another fact about Shrink is that he never served in the military and never experienced military life and didn't fight in the war. In contrast, Zeller served in the German army and participated in the revolutionary struggle for the Berlin workers and soldiers. His life experiences as a posters show the orator. In that period, artists believed they could have an essential role in society. They thought with their paintings they could encourage people to start a revolution against their regime and to build a better life for themselves. Most of the Zeller's paintings are anti-fascist works. Based on Art Institute research, Zeller did participate in such a movement. It seems to be a depiction of hope for those who find the strength to speak up. Art and culture cannot resist war. Nobody will write a book or do research with a bullet whistle at the ear, but they give one strength to bear on rebel, not just to accept it, but to think it over and overcome it by Andrea Grell. Thank you.